back to the future or back to the past. It's all about perspective. For the team at All Things Motoring, this is where it all started. The 18th of June, 2022, we aired our first show. We filmed it at this incredible facility. Why are we back? Well, we were invited by the incredible team that runs this unbelievable facility. Around us today, you'll see incredible amount of visitors, incredible amount of exhibitors. Why do I keep using the word incredible? Because this facility is incredible. Theme of the day, Native Creative. You've just got to love the title choice. Absolutely brilliant. What have we got in store for you? Lots of car clubs, lots of visitors, lots of exhibitors, and lots of fun. As South Africans, we all know the term no gun on spry. Behind us is something that surprised me and I hope it's going to surprise you. We know we get petrol engines, we get diesel engines, we get hybrid engines, you get electric engines, but who knew that you got a charcoal engine? No lies, behind me, a charcoal powered car. In the 1940s, during the wartime effort, apparently there was a shortage of petrol. So they used to use a minimal amount of petrol to start the car and then that ignited a charcoal burning furnace that you see on your screen right now. Incredible, beyond. I wonder why it never took off. Every now and again, there's a piece of equipment that truly catches your eye. Behind us, the Atlas Life Saving Machine. Can you imagine, picture the scene, 1910s, 1920s, you've got eight, 10 firefighters, buildings on fire, people are ready to jump out, Looks like a round trampoline with springs on the side, obviously because when you're jumping from 60, 70 meters, you can't just have a tarpaulin. But what I can honestly imagine is you've got firefighters saying, isn't that Martin? Yes, Martin used to date my sister and he like uh, really let her down. Okay, mana, thoughts since. So today's a very special day for me. When we started the show, the very first interview we ever did while we were putting together production was with Mandlin Cormo at the James Hall Museum. Truly, when they say the wheel has come full circle, <laughs> today has come full circle. Talking about wheels, James Hall Museum, going strong, yourself, Kai Sang, Sharon, the same faces here. Tell us about a day like today. Thank you, Mike. Uh, it's a very nice day. It's an enjoyable event, especially if you've got a family Correct. and you need a place to be on a Saturday afternoon and that sort of thing. You take the kids, you go to an event like this. It educates them, it entertains them. It's always a, a fun to just combine education and, and entertainment. We've said it before, the museum itself is free. Entrance is free. Donations are not only welcome, but in my opinion, they are truly deserved. A facility like this, I think the biggest struggle always will be funding. I look around, it's immaculately clean, well maintained. The staff, your colleagues are super positive. What are the challenges in keeping in this facility going? Okay, uh, you, you see most of these vehicles, we try and uh, give them a certain upkeep and yes. you know, certain look to them and certain feel. So, but we would like to have them as mobile exhibitions. Of course. So, a uh, refurbishing a, a car like this one costs a lot of money. Of course, so uh, donations for that sort of for those sort of projects are always welcome. So I'm a very kind guy. I love this car behind me, the David Kramer Combi. There's a beautiful Alfa Romeo inside and some incredible other pieces. If you can't afford to maintain them, can I give you a simple solution? Donate them to All Things Motoring. <laughs> Mandla, on a serious note, you and your team, this incredible facility, open seven days a week, am I correct? Six days a week. Six days a week. Tuesday to Sunday. Tuesday, yeah. Sunday. Yeah. God rested on Sunday, they rest on Monday. Come and visit with the family, with your friends. You will not be disappointed. Mandla, to you and the team, there you go from strength to strength. Guess what? what? We'll be back regularly. Thank you. Please come to. Some cars are truly ahead of their time. When you think of the 1970s, look at the Ferraris, look at the Lamborghinis, their design was futuristic. It looked like cars that you expected in the year 2000. The car behind me, a 1971 BMW 2000, in terms of design, it looked period correct, but there's something that is so standout about this car, as you'll see in my overview of this car. But before I give you the overview, I need to speak to the proud owner, Kesson. 
Big smile on your face, big smile on your face with good reason. Yeah. You've had this car for 12 years. Tell us about it. Yeah, I actually found this car abandoned in Bronco Street. Uh, abandoned? Yeah, abandoned. Uh, the previous owner was a missionary and actually left the country and passed wow. on. So the car was restored and just lying there, you know, in, in Bronco Street. So when I, when I found it, it was lying literally three years under a tree. That is incredible. Yeah. Now you've got something here that is unique. I cover a lot of classic car shows. I can truthfully say this is the first time I'm seeing one of these in the flesh. When you look at the car today, you haven't just restored it. You've restored it to perfection. What goes into restoring a vehicle like this? Yeah, luckily most of the body work was done by the previous owner, but because it's been abandoned, it's been neglected. Right. I said to change all the wiring, the fuel system, give it a good service. And yeah, lots of other sort of uh, little TLC just to get it looking good. Amazing. When it comes to restoring a car, there's no question. There's two elements. There's time required and there's money. In this particular case, was it more time than money? I think it was more time than money because uh, I had to find parts. I had to source parts. Um, yeah, I had to read up on it and ensure that uh, there were certain items missing, how they function, because you just don't get the knowledge just anywhere. So it's more time consuming, Good. speaking to clubs yeah, and things like that. So Gesson picks it up for a bargain. He doesn't charge for his time. Off screen, we've agreed. I'm giving him 15,000 Rand for it. I'll look to sell it for about 300,000. That's what I believe it's worth. Yep. Gesson, thank you. <laughs> what is quite clear is that I'm comfortable in this very comfortable car. Talking about comfort, another word, ergonomics. I believe that ergonomics is a word that's often bandied about, not understood by consumers, and definitely not understood by designers. Allow me to explain. I sit in this car in the driving position. Every single aspect of this car falls perfectly to place. Clock in the center, speedo on the right, fuel tank level, temperature gauge, a warning light to tell me if my handbrake was on. Look how the gear lever falls easily to hand. Look at the handbrake. Every single aspect of this car is perfectly designed. This is 1971. I want to put the interior light on falls easily to hand. I want to light my cigar. Cigarette lighter falls easily to hand. Rear view mirror, perfectly positioned. Sun visors, easy to use, unbelievable design for the time. So for those viewers who are under 35 years old, I'm about to make a bold prediction. I'm gonna mention two terms that are one I will guarantee you've never heard and the other one possibly you've heard. AM, what does that stand for? We all see it on our radio amplitude modulation but prior to that AM wasn't called AM it was called MW which stood for medium wave that I'm sure some people have heard of one that I'm almost positive that nobody's heard of is SW for short wave that was used in the war years carried over until the 1960s and early 1970s but I knew it was being superseded by FM how do we know that very easy there's two FM buttons one AM button and one shortwave button. It is well known that I'm an Audi fan. I've sat in Audis of the early 1970s. I can tell you definitively, they do not have this quality, this style or this ergonomic design. If you ask anybody, what does BMW stand for? Yeah, there'll be the funny uh, comments like, be my wife, broken mechanics workshop, whatever it may be, or Bavarian Motorwerke. However, it's pretty obvious and nobody actually knows the B is for blue, the W is for white, and the M is for middle. Today we have the privilege of interviewing Officer Vogan Ibrahim from the Metro Police, but not just uh, any department of the Metro Police, a special department. I'm walking around, I see there's no notepad. I think to myself, <laughs> you're not trying to stop these cars from speeding, are you just looking at old license discs? <laughs> Tell us what you do. Okay, we, we do public education on a special day like this. Yes. We want to encourage people to come out and have fun, but at the same time do it safely. Keep to the rules of the road. But that is absolute key. Now, safety starts from a very young age. Yes. Yourselves, do you go to schools? Where yes. do you start? Yes, we do start at schools where we implement uh, uh, pedestrian safety, teach the little ones from a young age. Wow how to stay safe when using a road, any public road. 
amazing. So this facility, Jay's Hall Motoring Museum, we've shared with the viewers. Many people don't know about it. You're based in Johannesburg. What an incredible facility. When you walk around, what is your impression? What a wonderful event. Uh, I'm uh, also a car enthusiast myself, uh, uh, yes. and it's amazing. And your favorite brand, if I may ask? Uh, my favorite br brand is BMW. <laughs> what is it? BMW, Mercedes, Mercedes, BMW. But I've got news for you. My favorite brand is Audi. Officer, oh, okay. in lovely speaking to Thank you. you. Wishing you and your team the very best. Thank you so much. Obey the rules. Respect the officers. They deserve respect. Thank you. I bet you if you ask 10 people, what do they think of when they hear the word rally? They think of cars with four wheels kicking up dirt, but not all rallies are about cars. Today, we're speaking to Graham, the DJ rally specifically for motorbikes. Tell us about it. It's for motorcycles built up to the end of 1936. So specifically 1936 and no more. 1936 and older. <laughs> yes. yes. Um, nothing younger than 1936. Amazing. Amazing. Yourself, what have you got here? This is a 1936 uh, 500cc Veloset yeah. um, MSS. And we know for sure that's roadworthy because in the last week you've just completed the rally. Yes, the rally with this year was roughly 650 kilometers wow. over two days. But that's a lot of distance to cover in a day. I mean, 225 kilometers in a day. Where do you overnight? Um, it starts in Hillcrest, right. overnights in Newcastle. Beautiful. Um, it's, uh, ro we rode for about nine and a half hours the first day and yes. about eight and a half hours the second day. So a slightly different route, you know, when you think of Joburg to Durban, you always think of the M3 highway, but you've gone inland a little bit. It's all on the back roads right. um, through the Midlands meander and then Moy River, Fork Rust, Newcastle, and Standerton, all the old yes. Durban Road. And I think the reason for that is because they don't want too many people ogling them on the highway. They're competitors, typically 80 to 90. What are we looking at? I'm not talking about 80 to 90 years old. That too. <laughs> the number of competitors? Uh, usually between 80 and 100, right. 110 bikes. Yes. Um, ages probably from 35 to this year, the oldest rider was 78. Amazing. It has been older than that in previous yeah. years. So now the actual format to the rally. Tell us about that. It's a regularity trial. Right. So you get a route schedule, which gives you time and yeah. distance. And you have to be at the specific places at a specific okay. time. We carry data loggers, which they then program um, set points in. You don't Amazing. know where they are. So yeah. you just ride and try to stay on time as best you can all the time. Now your navigational tools, GPS, modern navigation, none of that for you. I looked at the dashboard. That looks like something from the 1930s. It's a route schedule and stopwatches. You have one, one watch just giving you your yeah. total elapsed time. And then the second watch you use for checking your speed. Amazing, amazing. If you're lucky enough to find kilometer stones on the side of the road, <laughs> you can then work out the, on the rally table that yeah. tells you what, what time over what distance, and that's how you that's calculate incredible. your speed. And now for our viewers, somebody wants to get involved in the DJ Rally 2025, what do they do? Um, probably best to join one of the clubs, yeah. either the Classic Motorcycle Club, the Vintage Motorcycle Club, or the Vintage and Veteran Club. Those are the local Gauteng-based clubs. And then obviously you're going to have to find a suitable motorbike. An event like this, do they have a sponsor? I see something on your shirt. It's uh, I too, they sponsored the event last year. This yes. was last year's shirt and they sponsored again this year and they've undertaken to sponsor next year as well. Incredible. To I too, all the supporters, all the fans, may the event go from strength to strength. Been lovely speaking to you. Thank you very Wish much. You the very best. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Where have we seen this scene before? I think a few years ago, when you were here visiting us. April 2022, this is where it all started. Sharon runs this incredible facility. She's a welcoming face, a welcoming voice, and the knowledge behind James Hall Motoring Museum. Yeah. Am I right? Yeah, I would think so. Yes, you are. <laughs> How did we get here? Depends. The M2 highway, or as a host of all things motoring, who grew up in the suburb of Bligauri. We got here by the number six bus that was the Bligauri bus. Every single vehicle around me is a vehicle that did 
active service in South Africa. The vast majority were in the Greater Johannesburg area. Talking about the Greater Johannesburg area, it amazes me that this incredible museum located to the south of Joburg is not frequented more and known more. You can ask people, have you been to James Hall Motoring Museum? And they say, what are you talking about? It is an incredible facility. Come with a family. It is free. They do not ask for a donation, but donations are deserved. Would I recommend it? Twice on Sundays. Joburg Central, Joburg Central.